Hello and welcome to Evolve Pipe Drive Podcast. We talk all things pipe drive, sales, apps, and the pipe drive marketplace. My name is Bruce Bignall. I'm the sales director here at Evolve, and today it's my great pleasure to be joined by Pekka Putanen, the CEO at Eventilla. Eventilla is a platform that offers event management solutions for events both live and online. So live in person, to remember those, and online. Uh, I'm really excited to be talking with Pekka today for a number of reasons. Uh, one, Pekka is a true entrepreneur having run businesses since his days at the University of Ulu, where he started the adventure business Wild Guides, which saw him take people rafting, climbing, kayaking, um, and many other adventures that I would love to go on. <laughs> uh, and two, because Pekka has been running Eventilla for a number of years now, eight or, or even more now, I think, um, and he's led them an event business through the last two years. Uh, re- we are recording this in 2022. Um, so the last two years have been very, very hard, uh, for a number of event companies so to see him run that through there super um loads of lessons that i'm sure he can share with us plus eventilla is on the pipe drive marketplace uh, ready for you to try out in the descriptions below so pekka welcome uh, please can you introduce yourself and eventilla to our audience thank you bruce it's good to be here and and online in that sense so my name is pekka i'm from uh Oulu. Finland and and uh, I'm a part of Eventilla crew so we produce Eventilla online management uh, event management software that helps marketers and event professionals to run their events trainings uh, webinars whatever uh, as as easy as possible and automate a heck of a lot of uh, data transfer between different systems that we all use with with our marketing tech stacks brilliant so we might I, i'm sure we mentioned this offline right uh, and you told me before we started recording that you've listened to a few of these things before um a lot of our audience is on pipe drive and or they're considering the switch um so this is you know really about kind of servicing them in in, in that regard uh what does if you can go a little bit more into eventilla you know how long has it been running i said eight years um but would that be right like what, what's the kind of makeup of, of the team looking like now well eventilla is actually a little bit older in uh, than that we started in 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 2010 and and we've been bootstrapping ever since i'm yep. not i'm not actually original founder here in in that sense i was uh, in, a, in a sister company in that sense that that did marketing automation email marketing content management and and media monitoring and transferred in 2014 to to Eventilla to to grow this as an independent business mm-hmm. in, in that sense so being in in marketing tech sphere for for a quite a lot of long time now and so, yeah. so what does that team look like now so it pivoted and obviously you took over is is that a big sales team is it development team what what's the what's the well we are about a dozen people right now so yeah. producing stuff and 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 luckily producing software doesn't take that much of 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 a crew in 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 that sense we have our own sales marketing and and development uh, stuff alongside with our customer success team nice and, and so what what would a, a typical event a customer look like are you do you have a s- certain region that you're covering is there a certain event industry that that's kind of the strongest for you guys well naturally we are quite strong in the nordics as yep. we as we're uh finland bound and and uh and finland first in that sense and and that's our main focus of our own uh sales activities is is focusing with finnish companies yeah naturally here but we do serve clients all around the world in in that sense events are, are global things people need to meet and so on and the needs are are pretty unified all around hmm. so and and the same thing goes with with the clients so so we from a man and a van <laughs> up to up to the uh, huge global companies we yeah. we serve uh, all of them but uh, naturally we have those kind of certain industries that that really really excel using eventilla and and uh, if i would pick up two here is is one would be trainings and and education in that sense uh 
uh, running like this kind of uh, typical client would use uh, Eventilla to run their paid uh, online courses or first aid trainings or yeah. management training courses or those kind of things that you run out those events day in, day out uh, all around the year. And, and second would be uh, associations and these kind of organizations, NGOs that purely exist to, to provide events and, and, and content to their members, whether they are free or paid. So a lot of NGOs exist to, to promote about their, their urgent things and, and to arrange stuff for their members. So those are like very typical eventual clients. From that perspective right. nice and i guess what so what would you say the what business problem is invented are solving there like what what's the um so you've said before but you know if you're setting up events conversion is key right so so what what's the kind of business itch that you, you guys help the, them scratch <laughs> Uh, that depends heavily on, on, on the industry and, and, and the use, it, use its case. Typically yeah. from the NGO side or any company side, it would be the membership or, or, or client experience. So you really want uh, your guest or your, your, your to feel at home. So everything is branded according to the client's look and uh, feel. So you're not going to uh, participate in, in, in third-party vendors' software name slash event. You're participating in that client's uh, event. Yes. It's, it's, it's your event. It's your guest. It's, it's your show. It, it, and it needs to look and feel like that. And, and everything needs to happen in that chosen language that it's hosted on that currency and, and on that payment gateway that it's, it's not the money is not running through us. We don't yeah. take a fee out of that. It's it's your event. It's your sales, and and so on. It's it's using that, yeah. and then on on the other hand, we much we want to automate as much as possible. And that's why I like this IT, so that you can automate a lot of stuff on the on the back end side. So the event management is that kind of funny side just like marketing, that you never run out of things to do. Mm. And it gets more hectic whenever you are closer, the more closer you are to the deadline, which is typically the, the event where everything happens on a certain date and time, maybe in a certain venue. And I have never run into a, a event manager who said that, well, there's actually nothing more to do. We just <laughs> wait things to happen. There's always things to do. And, yeah. and so there's always things that we can automate, make it easier so that, that, so that the event host can then focus on things that, that cannot be automated. Uh, managing the guests, managing the uh, speakers, being there standby when something happens because yeah. there's always something happening and so on. Help, helping them to capture the data that is typically either siloed within event management software. We need to make sure that it's in a usable form, in the usable software that it's reused, whether it's for sales purposes, for yeah. marketing purposes, for accounting purposes, for statistical purposes, for surveys, whatever, that the data is there and it's automatically updated to the right system and all the the changes are, are updated live also. Yeah. So, so from a, because um, I think you, we mentioned uh, that the Helsinki Marathon was, was, was run, right? So, so the, the, and from, from the one-man band, so would you have a man in a van set up at an event like this? And uh, what would, how, how would they use it? Because obviously from a pipe drive standpoint, we would really look to push sales leads and manage the sales leads. But the event in a platform can obviously do much so much more. Um, but from this use case, it's really like, okay, if, if you've got an output that might be an engaged member of, of, of the of the event, that's then talking into pipe drive in this instance. Would that be right? Well, maybe instead of a sporting event, we would take, for example, a training event. Yeah. In, in, in that sense, uh, typically user case would be so that, okay, we need something uh, uh, 
to promote an event landing page that that okay we have an event whether it's it's training or sporting event or something else you need something to guide people into to have a look at okay what you're offering whether it's it's a full calendar of events and and there you select okay i want to attend this one and and so on you need to guide people there it needs mm. to be on your url and it needs to be updated but at that time you only need a certain amount of data there because afterwards it's all about the conversion so you don't want to tr distract people anymore you just want to convert them as as the signups whether it's paid or whether it's free like like breakfast seminar or something like that or yeah. webinar you want to host them then you need to uh, make sure that the people actually do sign up to the uh, or show up sorry to the event so it needs to be in their calendar so you mm. need to include automated calendar file so that it's automatically updated in the calendar because if it's not in the calendar it doesn't exist it doesn't exist yeah. yeah and then reminding people that hey it's coming up why should you really show up uh, these two COVID years has has uh, taught people that that you don't need to show up in that sense mm. all the terms and conditions is that okay if you don't show up okay we reimburse you or just show up to your next webinar and you have a plethora of events that you can attend at the same time so yeah. you re really need to re uh, convince your audience that hey you need really need to show up and this is the real value that we provide you so uh, reminder emails that can be personalized based on your your indications to the event that what I am looking for here why should I really uh, come here do uh, giving them promises of answering their questions that they gave during up the registration phase and so on mm. then you have your magic happen whether it's it's your your live event or concert or breakfast seminar somewhere that's something that it's real person to person whether there is is a screen in between but it's happening afterwards yeah. you need to thank you uh gather uh feedback uh and and act and and uh, re and uh reactivate them by by inviting them back and maybe then to have the data reused in as leads to your sales team as, as as subscribers to your marketing team and so on and that means that if you do these things um, manually on the back end if you are the man in the van you need to type e every registration somewhere you need to re-edit because they change who they uh, their job roles or they change people who are actually attending and those kind of things uh, sending them uh, reminders and and uh, zoom links or something like that yeah registering who actually showed up to the place and then uh, act accordingly so thank you for attending sorry we missed you here yeah. is our web uh, webinar uh, recordings uh, and so on hey we have an upcoming event uh, that you might be interested in because it's on the same topic and then uploading downloading all these kind of things to your accounting marketing uh, crm analytics and so on and all the, uh, and sending out personalized diplomas thank you for attending and here is your your diploma to put on your i love me uh, wall and 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 uh, to stats with in your cv and all these things can be very easily automated so yeah. with a man and a van you can actually run uh dozens part, yeah. of of events per week uh, from 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 the marketing perspective naturally you need to have an event host on the site and a venue yeah. for example yeah. if you are running for example first aid trainings that doesn't necessarily be, uh, be you you rent an, an event host and a venue but you can automate everything else so instead of having three people uh working on the back office to run all your events you may, might need only one yeah and i mean that that's the the beauty of it, the automating of the tasks that you don't need a human to be doing, right? So, and, and the things that are repeatable per event, so whether that's the reminders, the thank yous, the data collecting, which then isn't scribbled down, it's written down and remembered throughout the whole process. So it can be repeated and reused 
you know, to get them to uh, entice them to actually come to the event that they signed up to last week. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and I guess that's multi-channel as, yeah. as well, these are, Yeah, these are not typically problem when you are running a... Th- uh, uh, on a conference for a thousand people mm. and, 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 and rent the Excel hall to, to, to do, to do that. But, uh, it's a problem if your, your average attendance is, is 10 people. Mm. You, you, it's, it's uh, simply not viable to, uh, to hire a, a event manager to do these things for an event that has 10 or maybe 50 people and you run them day in and day out. But yeah. the system doesn't care whether it's thousand people or ten people, and and that m- makes it so that, for example, uh, we serve a lot of media companies, yeah. and media companies still do a lot of these kind of uh, traditional type of sales stuff. That okay, you have a client manager, and they take their key accounts, and we go and and see the game or or see a concert or something like that, and might take two or five people there, and so on. And instead of collecting that data personally uh, uh, throughout and maybe remi- remembering to update your CRM that, okay, I invited people from these companies and, and uh, I hosted them this evening and accounting might know that I spent a lot of money on my credit yeah. card in, in that sense. And, and, and I'm sure that my upcoming sales came from that. So please give me bigger budget for, for these kind of things. We now we know because it's two minutes to uh, set up your 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 uh, personal uh, event that looks like your it's not your email but it's it's your media company's landing page but it's only for three people for example to sign yeah. up they don't need to be contacted via phone or or email they can do the registration whenever they want they get the emails and everything looks just as good as it did for your annual ball in in that that perspective. And all the data becomes visible for the company. Instead of having your your, your sales reps running these kind of micro events in different different branches, in different cities, and in different business venues, you now get a, a view that, hey, what's going on? How many... Actually, we are running dozens of these kind of micro events per month, for example, mm-hmm. that we didn't actually know that existed. And we get to actually capture the people who were invited, who showed up for these kind of events, and that's updated into your CRM, into Pipedrive. So you actually can then start to measure that what's the business impact of these micro events. Mm. Be- because um, traditionally, all that data is lost because it's it's yeah it's it's kind of it's dark aside. data, right? So it's ha- yeah. ha- there's no, there traditionally wouldn't have been a way to track it. You, you would have said, oh, I I took Simon, Jason, and Hannah to to the game, yeah, um, and then I mean we've kind of touched upon it with a couple of clients where they they take a lot of people out, but they had no idea about how much work that that person had ever sent them back. So you might take contractors out on site, but the question should be, not you know, uh, how how profitable is it to take that person to to Wembley if they 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 haven't sent you any work in three years, for example. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of treating that as a lead source and or a, a mini sales campaign, right? So in that instance, would you have individual sales or, or sales teams run those kind of micro campaigns, or would they work with a a marketing team to say, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm t- taking these clients out." How how would you s- see that kind of? It it, it well, that's client specific stuff. Sure. How yeah. the, how they run those things, but but typically we have this kind of uh, we can have actually uh, this kind of uh, light versions of of the platform. That, that a single page event that, okay, I want to, to arrange this kind of micro event, this date, this time, this for these people, create, and I got it. You don't need to have actually even access to the system in, in, in that sense. So the sales reps can arrange uh, events with have already pre-automated reminder emails and all the bells and whistles in the back end. 
end and the marketing staff is there just for the support. So if they need something extra, they can do those kind of things on behalf of those kind of things. A lot of these kind of associations and NGOs use the system the same way. You have your local branches and uh, those people are not, uh, uh, and sometimes it's it's their hobby, for example, to, to assemble some kind of uh, local gatherings and meetings. You typically cannot even give them access to your CRM, for example, if, yeah. if you are associations and someone, you are, handling GDPR uh, stuff, and you do not want to be their IT support uh, desk Mm -hmm. if you have these kind of local branches. But if you have a single uh, page which says that, okay, I'm arranging a, 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 um, uh, let's say, a uh, football uh, meetup, in in my hometown for, for this NGO, for example, for this month you don't need to be educated you need to just know where you fill the form but the end result is that you have all the bells and whistles and and the event is looking as good as the the annual ball or the general meeting of 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 the same ngo and you can have all the reminders calendar files map inserts and those kind of things inserted to that event and the the original host that 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 set up the meeting can have then an online report that okay these people signed up and maybe have some of the in, information even masked there that okay you don't need to have that but on the back end all that information is still recorded to event and can be pushed and relevant parts to your pipe drive or marketing automation or tracked back to to your 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 member extranet or or something like that yeah, no, I mean, it's just got me thinking about a lot of trends in the event industry and things like this, right? So, and you, you a couple of minutes ago, you said about the COVID. So, obviously, we've just gone through COVID. And I, I don't believe that COVID necessarily changed. Like, it, I think a lot of these things were trends that were coming. I think it just accelerated a lot. So, what, what, how would you say that from, from like an added value standpoint, right? So, um, whether it was burnout of going to in-person Excel trade events, whether it was burnout of um, Zoom meetings, like we we wouldn't be having so many Zoom meetings anyway. But I think it just accelerated the trend. And how do we add value to the event space? So, so yeah. So, so what? So I might be wrong there. That this COVID might have changed everything, right? But I, I just think it accelerated a hell of a lot of trends that were probably needed to happen certainly in the, in the event space what what do you see has been some of the opportunities for you guys to kind of lean into and 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 what that will continue to kind of grow from from a, from a roadmap standpoint well i totally agree with you on on that that it actually just accelerated stuff just like it did with with all the business to business activities yeah. that that things that can be done online will be done online you don't fly for for uh, simple business meetings ever anymore and, yeah. and those kind of things uh, with with events we're still unsure of how things are going to happen yeah. in the future but now a lot of people are, are trying out different types of uh, stuff if we are past covid in in that sense that that okay how's our online events going to fly out now that we have an option to have also live events Mm. we see that live events are becoming uh, popular but but the conversion isn't that good people Mm. are still very selective of what to attend because there is a plethora of very good quality online uh, content that you that you can consume in that sense and 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 then there is the the challenge with hybrid events because you have all the possibilities but also the challenges and tasks from both ends from event management software point of view things are growing quite heavily and and things are looking good because uh, as a you need as a marketer you you just need to have it all 
in 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 that sense that nothing nothing was uh forgotten in that sense you're gonna run live events you're gonna run online events possibly you're gonna run hybrid events that means that okay part of your audience is live with you in 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 the same venue and part of them are online whether it's the full event uh in 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 sync with hybrid or just parts of the event Mm. it it really doesn't matter and people are juggling around with these kind of things but this has proven that you cannot run these kind of events with just a simple web form or excel sheet or or single system you just cannot have a like in in when covid hit it's it was zoom account was everything you needed Mm -hmm. to go and run your events and we saw that that a lot of different type of events that that people thought uh, pre-covid that cannot be arranged online are actually uh, arranged online for example compulsory first aid trainings Mm. that you need to have uh, if you're working in certain industries those are arranged online nowadays and all these kind of different things and and so you need to have a system that can handle all these kind of events and pull the data into a single point where you can then compare those data and give unified experience to the guest because they are lost and confused. Especially, uh, well, in the beginning when online events were new and so on, people were really scared that, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, pop, I'm, I'm, I'm participating in, in Evolve event, but now I'm getting something us.zoom slash something, something, something from yeah. from email domain that I don't know. And everybody has been taught, in, my, my niece has told that never click a link that you don't yeah. know and so on. And it's in different language and part of this is in Finnish and part of this is in English and this is in, in, in blue and, and the company that I'm visiting is green and so on. So all these things need to look unified and, and, and the brand experience need to be there so that the people can convert because there's so many options for people. So you don't want any hiccups. Everything needs to be brand aware and so on. So you need to people to participate the same way to all these th- different type of events, whether it's live or hybrid or one time or huge one. It, they all need to uh, look and breathe the, the, the brand. And you need to capture the data into the single place so that you can see that, okay, these uh, uh, these options do work and I'm capturing valuable leads from, from this media and, 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 and our sales are, are getting results from that and these kind of events work and these cost a lot of money but they work and, and so on. So you can have comparable data and, and, and the data cannot be lost in those silos and nobody's downloading and uploading information just like sales reps are not going <laughs> to update the crm just yeah. by telling them to upload it <laughs> no not- notoriously uh, lazy salespeople's what i hear most of the time when i talk to businesses <laughs> every other day um yeah let's let's not look at my personal pipeline <laughs> activity <laughs> yeah um what what does that mean for the the roadmap of eventilla right so do you see this as because you said you've obviously been up from bootstrap to kind of where you got to now is it 11 to 12 employees um do, do you now see like an open road do, do you are you defining you know you've you've understood what your what your you know what your service you know your, your uh, key points that you're, you're servicing the, these uh customers because you touched upon things like post event surveys and things like that so is it more features or or is it just kind of refining the user experience what what does it what does the roadmap look like well um the roadmap looks like uh in in that sense that we're improving in the areas that we're really good already in 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 that sense so automating and, and and transferring data to our third party systems also on the map so that we are a very good match with any company that has whatever type of technology stack up you already have. Yeah. We're just filling there the void of, of event management so that it can serve your marketing team and sales team and so on from the event yeah. point, point of view. And then supporting your, your, your client experience so that they get the, the whole shabam 
from from the same place from the from the tool uh, perspective um, we're gonna touch up with the user interface uh, or we have the uh, the demo also and in in in, in uh in YouTube, and, and uh, I'm sure that there's going to be the, the link. And there's, mm -hmm. a, for example, glimpses from, from our survey tool user interface that we're going to also implement to the event uh, management side. Yeah. Yeah. So, what Pekka has talked, we, we recorded a, a demo, so that'll be in the links in the description below. But you can get a more in depth one uh, if you, uh, yeah, again, follow the other link in, in the description to get your own personal one because we went quite high level. We certainly, you know, we cover the platform and, and things like that, which is quite a nice segue to we cover the platform and how it integrates with PipeDrive and some of the use cases there. So how how do they integrate? Is is it a simple integration? Is it a complex integration? Uh, do people need a degree to uh, integrate the two things? Well, it's it's pretty simple uh, forward. You need Eventilla and then you just down, uh, get the PipeDrive integration from the marketplace. Perfect. And, and then we just map out, okay, which type of field you want to capture in the pipe drive, and and uh, and who you do want, who you do not want to capture in your leads, for example, yes. you don't want to have your your sales reps uh, calling to your existing clients, yeah. and and so on, or just new people who are actually from existing uh, uh, client companies in that in, in in that sense. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, we arrange our own webinars and, and, and use that as a lead capture in our own pipe drive. We have been using pipe drives uh, I just checked January 2012. Nice, okay. So you've seen some changes at pipe drive as well, have A bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have been a bit of lazy to capture all the new features and so on. So especially during the last, let's say, 24 months, so much has happened on pipe yeah. drive that it's it's amazing in, in yeah. that sense we use it as as primarily as as a tool for our sales team mm -hmm. and and it's it's it, it's worked uh, perfectly and now we're as we're using the, the the our own integration between the systems it's it's helping our sales now to capture better those actual leads from from the webinars and and mapping those out so it's 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 working really great yeah, and in terms of the integration, so it is on, on the Pipe Drive Marketplace. Um, yeah, we'll be sure to have links in the description below um, for that demo. But yeah, we would stress in getting your own personal demo because uh, we, we go quite high level, which which is good, but there's so much to cover, right? So uh, yeah, it's... yeah events, events can be so complicated and, and each, each uh, user case, it's really simple and straightforward and so on. And it's totally different from the two million different user cases yeah, and sure. everybody needs to have that okay it needs to work like this and that and that and and so it's always just okay this switch yes this switch no and and so on and yeah. and to getting it done so that you don't need to touch up on every registration and every guest and every event yeah understood in terms of you said right at the beginning um, that you became CEO, is it 2014? Is that right? Or yeah, 2014. So, so what was that journey like? So, if if you were in the kind of that kind of bootstrap startup space, what then led you, or what were the circumstances to the end, then you say, actually, I can now run with this and uh, you know drive Eventilla over the next however many years? <laughs> I don't know for the foreseeable future, but but. <laughs> But anyways, I was uh, uh, I was business di director running in, uh, international, uh, setting up international offices for for uh, for the previous company, Liana Technologies. And and uh, I would I was already selling uh, Eventilla as a service to to uh, some of the international clients and so on. And and so I knew knew the team, I knew the product, and and. It was a very good, uh, good product in, in in a technical point of view, and it yeah. solved a lot of these kind of uh, cases already back then. What people in, in the marketing space had, like like we have an upcoming event, we need to set up a, a landing page for it, so we need to talk to talk to a, a IT company to set up a, as a 
website and it cannot cost a lot of money because it's only for one time case and we are actually selling uh, tickets so we need to hook up a payment gateway there and so on hey we have a good yeah. technical tool to do this but it needs marketing and sales experience and 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 a lot of these things rounded up quite well and and uh, I was quite happy to take my laptop and change a few desks to yeah. the left so did you know the co-founders or did you know the founders at the time and yeah we have we, we actually the company shared a part of uh, founders not okay. all of them but but so and so it was a uh, well, not a, a switch in the family in, yeah. <laughs> in that sense. And technically, it's it's uh, not a spin out, but it, it could be. Yeah, for sure. Oh, nice. No, I, I always like to hear how people, you know, got, got into that space. And I love that you, you kind of were uh, a product advocate or, a, you know, certainly a partner in, in some sense. Um, so you would, have, you would have heard firsthand from customers or would be customers or certainly prospects like the gaps in the market did did that did that drive you into so when you did become a ceo did that drive you to some of the, the changes that you knew you had to make from a technology standpoint like early doors yes yeah. there were uh, parts of those and and uh, as a user also before yeah. <laughs> becoming an advocate and 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 also maybe even a salesperson for the for the tool i I knew and sensed that, okay, which are these kind of pain points that this tool so easily helped me to do yeah. and solve and, and, and to see that how quickly uh, people were able to adapt and, and take the tool and, and do things that took a whole lot of time beforehand, so wherever in the globe there might be, arranging... Um, uh, customer symposiums in Dubai or, or running events in, in Hong Kong, it was all the same challenges and, mm -hmm. and, and majority all the same solutions that yeah. a, a specific tool could ta take. Naturally, during, uh, during all these years, we have a zillion more features for to host these kind of zillion re requests that event managers have, mm -hmm. but, but the end result is still there. I need to run something and, and I need the computer do it for me. Yeah. And these are the conditions that, that I want this thing to happen. Well, well brilliant. Thank, thank you for um, uh, your time, Pekka. You, you just said there about those million and one things that a, uh, an event manager wants or needs. So what's from, from the event to the platform, what's your favorite use case that you've seen someone come up with um, that were just in, you know, ingenious or just just really blew, blew you away that's a good question because they come from from all perspectives but i do love sales i'm i'm, I'm salesperson by heart yeah so i i i really like those kind of things uh, with with events it's so important that that because there is so much to choose from and and our our uh span to to focus on things is so short so mm. you need to convert people when whenever you get a glimpse of their attention that hey i have this kind of event i have this amazing piece of con uh, content that is really useful for you i i really want you to 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 consume this content or and to sign up for for this event so the most important thing is to convert that people so make it yeah. really really easy for them have no hiccups everything in 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 in, in unified with the brand but as soon as you have that captured why not take it a step further ask op optional questions do not force people to give out too much data because they just move on to the next thing to the, to the next notification on their on their screen but capture that data that they are willing to give because events are, are it's a trade-off i i give something from me which is typically personal data and you give something in back it's a transaction you give me content you give me whether it's that that concert in Bembley, which is tangible something or, yeah. or, or or webinar content i'm willing to give something that you need to, uh, to produce that for me for example i will give my actual uh, job description i will give you my actual contact uh, 
phone number, which I would never ever do if I'm subscribing to a newsletter. And the more more interesting lead I am to to a company, the the better educated I am to not give that information, for example, for purely marketing purposes or to for a white paper download. Yeah. But if it's if it's an event, especially if it's a live event, I'm more in, uh, inclined to give out my actual uh, data and and maybe even actual interests. I am interested in, yeah. for example, uh, mapping out new CRM. And this is something that is going to happen within the next three months, three to six months, maybe in a year. I'm not actually that interested. Yeah. So... You can you can gather so much ri- uh, richer data during these kind of event registrations than you could possibly do with with pure marketing or or, or simple signups. Yeah, the, the, and the, that, that can be the, then used automatically to drive the people actually to come into your event. So you can give back hints about what they gave during the registration, whether it's it's these kind of pieces of content. Hey, you were interested in pipe drive. Yeah. When ever, uh, somebody else could have a, a different system that you would talk in the same uh, yeah. event, and and naturally have them personalized. Uh, so so hi Bruce, welcome to our event name. In 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 that yeah. sense, or it can be those kind of handy things that are really needed uh, for uh, to make that event happen. For example, reminder that hey, don't drive to office this morning. SMS one hour before, drive to our uh, event. We have a breakfast waiting for you. Yeah. Or or you opted in to to pick up from the airport. The the, the bus leaves here. This is the number mm-hmm. for the driver, and and so on. So you can automate these kind of things. And and if you understand the value that you are getting by if you give up this kind of information mm-hmm. during your registration or after the registration, that okay. I am flying in and, and these are my preferences. Those are solid gold for, for marketing and sales, especially for sales. Yeah, I think it's just that the value exchange point is really interesting there, right? From a how much are you willing to give away when you sign up for a, a white paper download or a, a newsletter versus the, an in-person event or a, 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 even... So, so is there... Are people more willing to give more for an in-person event? Do you think versus a Zoom event now? Um, because I, I think all of those all of those touch points can be gold for either increasing conversion or increasing you know better sales for the better data for the sales and or marketing team internally, and or just making the 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 visitor the the, the event uh, guest making them have a much better experience before during and or after right so so it kind of helps everywhere along so my question there was uh would people hand more data across for a live person event do you think versus a a, a zoom event now or or is it kind of we don't care anymore <laughs> <laughs> well uh i think people care and 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 uh, as more and more sales activities and marketing activities are happening to 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 at least to c level people all the time people are worried that oh, where do i actually uh, give up my personal information in in that sense so people are very oh, where do they put and what kind of information do they put uh, that kind of information mm. uh, generally for a live event people uh, seem to uh, value the 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 event content more so they are willing to give out more information and they understand that okay they need this information to produce a better content for me yeah. in that sense so so in in that sense uh but it can happen also on online environment if you if you market that uh uh data exchange well enough we need your personal information because we want mm. to produce content that is relevant to you or we want to match up with with uh, some other visitors or something like that. Uh, we want to provide you one-on-one after the event or something like that. Yeah. So then you are more inclined to give up relevant data to that. But if it's just a Zoom webinar listening about uh, some topic, you might just want to give out an email. Yeah. And nothing else because 
you understand that okay i don't need they don't need anything else to to produce that content for me yeah so so as a marketer or event host you you need to tell why and then yeah. people are willing to give give that afterwards and then uh, you have a second option after the uh, event so ask those kind of questions in a, your post event survey okay was this relevant to you how mm. relevant how inclined you are to talk to for example a sales rep are you interested in a demo are you mm. this and that and that and you enrich that your client data with that and yeah, then it's I, all I, about I, imagination how far you can go in with this yeah it, it, it's horn in in that sense how you want to map this out yeah it's just got me thinking because the, it, <laughs> the more data you collect that the more there's more opportunity there is to uh you know um delight someone but also to really turn them off and that, that and what you're playing with there is your trust so as, as an event host if if, if you if you keep collecting data just to remarket to them and you're getting phone calls from people you like, I've told you no phone calls for example yeah um yeah so it's so, it's, so the, the the trust piece there is um with the event host as well but yeah I, I, I it's fascinating um in in terms of if you're just getting started as an event manager kind of getting started what would be the top tips like you know things to get right um and then also, if, if you're excelling, if you want to excel as an uh, event manager, what are some things that, you know, Eventilla can really help you, you do there? So, so again, getting started and, and how to excel. Getting started is, is uh, trying. <laughs> so just, just like with everything, it's, it's, it's uh, just uh, you learn by doing. And with online tools, that means that, hey, if 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 you get something wrong, no worries. Yeah. Edit, change, make a draft, scrap it, yeah. make a new one, and 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 just try out. So so it's it's so different than in 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 like in in tangible world where mm. you need to b buy stuff and and use that. So it's 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 just software. Yeah. So just run with it, and and. Uh, for a more seasoned uh, professional, don't be afraid to hook up different kind of systems to, to allow you to automate these kind of things so, so that you can get the, the, the participant data into your marketing or, or CRM and, and so on to, to build the platform piece by piece and, and, and then having this kind of the one, one tip that is, is uh, that we use because it's really good in, the, in, in our soft <laughs> software is that that you can make these kind of templates for your different type of events and you always start by not with a blank mm. but with a product that is 99% already there yeah and that just change what is needed for this particular uh, user case so our well we arrange webinars and and training so just change the dates and host name and click 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 and yeah. publish and that's it and and you have already pre-scheduled and automated everything that is related to that and it's then you just need to show up to your your recording station uh, 10 minutes before before the event and put the lights on and everything's running yeah yeah so even from the end user's experience the tacit knowledge of joining a training webinar they know the type of user journey so I click here sign up here yeah so it's so that don't don't try and reinvent the wheel <laughs> um, yeah with every with every single event that makes sense and for, we always ask this because we know pipe drive themselves do listen to this but have you got any pipe and obviously I, I didn't know you guys were on pipe drive um but any pipe drive feature requests that you would like to see well I would be glad if I would be aware of all the features. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, there are so many, but but uh, fix the Trello integration so that it it can copy your your Trello templates. Okay, we so run a number with with 
our internal activities with Trello. So, so that they have it, just up, about two or three weeks ago, they've just updated the, the workflow automation to include a trigger and action to Trello. So there, yeah. there might be something there. Yeah, we are using that. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a small piece missing, but but I know they're working on. So yeah. maybe in the next iteration, there comes that option also. There we go. Very, so very us specific stuff. Yeah, I like it. Um, cool. Is there anything else that you'd like to touch upon before before we sign off today? I think I, I covered enough. So <laughs> you, no, you, reach, it, reach up to, to if you want to hear more about Eventila or, or events or how we use pipe drive. And, and whatever this comes, we're here to help. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so we'll be sure to have links to the, the, uh, the demo that I went through with Pekka earlier um, and a link to get your own personal demo to kind of go a bit more in, in depth for your own internal use case. Um, and there'll be discounts to, to the event to the platform as well uh, below. But Pekka, once again, thank you so much. It's been super, super pleasure. Um, you've been listening to the Evolve Pipe Drive podcast, which talk about all things pipe drive sales and apps on the pipe drive marketplace thank you very much pekka thanks